had somebody uh, approach me, a, a friend of mine who works for a company. The po- question was posed to me, hey, you're doing podcasts now. I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm doing one. And, and they're like, uh, my boss said uh, we should maybe start thinking about doing content, uh, podcast content. Do you have any tips? I'm like, I, no, you're in the furniture industry. Like, I don't know any. Like, is there an audience for talking about? Uh, and I'm not asking. That's a rhetorical. I'm sure there's an audience out there. But, like, they hadn't even thought about, like, who they were speaking sure. to really through the podcast yet. So, or even why they uh, a podcast would be effective other than just, like, live streaming occasionally on their Facebook business page. Like, start somewhere. You don't have to do a podcast. But you can, like at least leverage the audiences that are already there. Yeah, well, and if there are any. And stop starting things just because you read an article about them, right? You right. know, is 2019 the yeah. era of the podcast? Well, it might it might be, but if yeah. you look if you look at iTunes and you look at the top 20 podcasts consistently, they all come from a traditional medium, right? Or a more mass medium. So, Joe Rogan comes from television, right? Like Chris Hardwick comes from television. Yeah. Serial comes from radio. So if you're looking in that and going, see, there's, there's a growth opportunity. Well, if, unless your furniture <laughs> company had a television channel, like that's not necessarily <laughs> right. an apples to apples comparison. But to your point, if there's an audience and you have something to say, you got to plan that stuff out. Because the thing that you and I talked about when we stopped doing the episode we did was, I think it's like 60 or 70% of people who start podcasts stop at episode six because yeah. they just... Well, I don't think that's unusual. That that's the same with anything. Sure, Most, it is. Well, but know, this anything. is just yeah, yeah. this is the thing du jour right well, now. Exactly. Everyone's going to start a podcast. Well, and there will be the you know it's already saturated, and I felt even funny dipping a toe in because it's like you know I even say on my on my about page of my website, it's like, does the world need another podcast? That's the first thing you read about about my podcast. Does the world need another podcast? The answer is no. Is See, but, I disagree. But no, but I mean, I'm saying in, in the abstract. As glibly but as I'm, you want to put that, I, would, I disagree, and I would, I'll tell you why. Because even if you just look at your first 15 episodes, there are people who traditionally don't show up on podcasts. And for sure are human beings in this town that haven't had an hour to talk about themselves in any platform. Yeah, but I, you, I understand what you're saying. I don't know. No, that I don't that, think you do. <laughs> I don't know that 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 doesn't automatically. Not that you're saying it should, but the automatically translate to an audience development. You know, it's like there's a reason where maybe if people find the podcast because they've heard of my work or the premise of the podcast, or they stumble into it somehow. A lot of times, when the guest isn't necessarily known, or you read the quick bio. They may not on paper be interested in, you know, or just reading the text and going, okay, I'll click into this and listen to this podcast. You know, there's a lot of levers to pull is what I'm saying uh, for yes. success. But I guess I would argue, like, you didn't get into this to have 100,000 people listen to the podcast. You got into it because you were interested in... It's you and me at this point. So int- You were interested good. in the, the... You're one the, of... You're my first fan of 1,000. So if you could leave a $100 bill on the table, I will be, be more than happy to do that. But, <laughs> you know, like, if you get into it trying to attract a giant audience, no, it's not going to yeah. work, no, right? You've got to get step. into it and, yeah. and be interested. Right. And, and, un- and un- not to cut you off, but and understand, like, it's a long tail. You need right. 100 episodes or 200 yeah. episodes or 300 episodes sure. before you can even say. Before anything could, you know, I mean, how many, you know, I mean, when Rogan started, like, I'm sure people were calling him crazy for five years. Sure. Like, it wasn't, you know, like, why are you doing this? Why are they four hours? Why are they three hours? And now he has a 14,000 square foot studio. Yeah. Like, he's doing okay. I mean, which is okay. If you want a big studio, I have a little less than 14,000, but I do have you, a nice studio. You do some other stuff in here, too. Well, that's yes. true. It's not dedicated to my podcast, but, you know, there's another there's there's another mountain to climb there, maybe. Sure. This Full Exposure Podcast episode has been made possible through the support of Metro Health, University of Michigan Health, and Dr. Peter Hahn, who believe that creativity and the arts are essential to a rich, healthy, and fulfilling life.